Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another Cornerstone Charts tutorial. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's episode we are going to take a look at a couple of different creative use cases for Cornerstone Charts that sort of fall in the same vein. So without further ado, let's dive in. First things first, here we are on the back end of WordPress and you'll notice we have five products created, A, B, C, D, and E. Now these products all have sales associated with them and we'd like to create a little tracker chart that shows the top three performers, right? What their sales are and which products they are. So how do we do that? Well, we can actually tap into that data, but you'll notice right off the bat, if we click on product A, we don't really know what data we have to access here. And that's where this nifty little tool comes in. We're gonna jump over to plugins here. We're gonna click add new and we are going to type in JSM. Now you'll notice a whole bunch of plugins show up here, but what we want, because this is a product post, we want JSM show post meta. And this is a plugin that I enjoy installing while I'm building just because I can inspect the various meta fields on different things that I'm working with. So this is one of those plugins that you can install, use it while you build, and then get rid of before you launch the site. So let's go ahead and jump over to our product pages now. And if I click on product A, You'll notice if I scroll down right below the fold here, we have post meta and I can see all of the meta fields and their associated values for this specific post. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice that I have a total sales on this product of four. If I jump back here and I look at product C and I scroll all the way down, you'll notice we have total sales of six. So how do we tap into these fields here and how do we create that chart? Well, as you know, we're going to be using Cornerstone Charts to do this. So let's jump over to Pro here, and we're going to install our copy of Cornerstone Charts. With that installed, we'll go ahead and activate. And with that activated, we'll go ahead and jump right into Cornerstone. Now, we're just going to put this on our homepage, but obviously you could create, a, if this was meant to be public or a private page, whatever, you could create that logic on your own. But we're going to go ahead and just put this on our front page here, and we'll click Start from Scratch. Now, we'll create a container. And within that container, we are going to grab a bar chart. So let's type in bar and pop in our bar chart here. Now we know that we want this chart to tap into the products as a whole. We want it to specifically look at the top three performers and we want to be consuming the data from this total sales meta field here. So how do we go about doing that? So the first thing we wanna do is select our chart. And now we want to add a looper provider to this chart, specifically a provider that taps into the products post, right? Now, we don't want this to be on our label set and we don't want this to be on our data set. We want it to be on the bar chart as a whole. So from this screen here, we're gonna go ahead and click on customize. And we're gonna turn this entire chart into a looper provider and we are going to actually provide our own query string because we want a couple of specific parameters here. Now, a fun little pro tip, you can actually grab the workspace inspector here, especially when you're doing things like query strings and all of that fun stuff. And you can actually stretch this out so you can see a little bit more of what you're working on in the query field here. Now we want post type equals product and post status equals publish. So we only wanna pull through our published products. And we want to order that by, so order by meta value num, because it's a number in that meta field, and meta key equals total sales. So what is the meta key of the field that we want to tap into? Well, it's that total underscore sales key. We want those sales to be in descending order. So we want the highest volume of sales on the far left of our bar chart and the lowest volume of sales on the right. So we're going to say and order equals desc so order is descending now we want to add in a meta query on this that specifically only pulls products that even have sales so that's going to be and meta query zero key equals total sales and meta query zero value equals zero and meta query compare equals greater than. So we only want to pull values that are greater than zero. And then we have five products, right? We have A, B, C, D, and E. And for the sake of this example, we only want to pull the top three products in descending order. So we want to see our top three performers. So we're going to say, and posts 
underscore per page equals three. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and shrink down our window now. And we do have three pieces of data here, but right now it's not reflecting anything useful. So let's go ahead and jump back over to general. And in our label set, we're gonna delete the other two because this is gonna be a consumer. And in our data set, we're gonna do the same. Now let's focus on the label set first. So we're gonna jump into this specific label here, inspect it, jump into customize, and tell it to consume. Now right away, we do see things consuming, but they say label, label, label. Well, let's jump back over to general. And now that it's consuming, we want it to pull through. We know we're feeding it the product post type, so we want the product title. Now when we scroll down, we'll see product C, product E, and product A. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's go back up a level here and jump into that one data item within our data set and do the same thing. We're gonna click customize and consume. So now all three of those are consuming data, but it doesn't know what data it's consuming just yet. So we're gonna jump back over to general and instead of a random integer, we're gonna go ahead and delete that, jump into our data field here, go to our meta, and you could just type this in, but we're gonna scroll all the way down until we find total sales. There it is. So we have total underscore sales is our meta field that we wanna tap into for our value. Let's go ahead and click on that. And now we are seeing that stair step. And let's go ahead and give it a color. Let's just say we want these to be blue. And we want our data set label to be product sales. All right, now we're looking pretty good. So here we see that product C has six sales. Product E has five sales, and product D has four sales. If we were to then jump into product D, so let's go here to D, add to cart. I'm gonna breeze over the checkout, but we're gonna go ahead and make a purchase here. All right, so we just placed another order for product D. Let's go ahead and save this and view it on the front end. So we had six, five, and four, but now we should have six, five, and five. So product C, product D, and product E. So using this same logic, what else could we do? Well, let's jump over here and we actually have some posts set up and we have articles one through seven. And there's this nifty little plugin that I really like called favorites. So we're gonna go ahead and type in favorites and we'll go ahead and install that. And with favorites installed, we'll go ahead and activate it. Now, there are some cool things you can do with this plugin, but we're gonna use it in its most basic format. It allows you to add a like or a favorite to a post type. So we're gonna jump into settings here. We're going to make sure that it is enabled for our posts, which it should be by default. So that's our articles, and we should be in good shape. We're just gonna go with whatever formatting they throw in here. So now, if we were to jump over to our posts, and we were to open article one, article two, and article three, we should see a little favorites icon here, and we can like this post. Article two, we can like that post. And article three, we can like that post. Now I'm gonna do this in some incognito windows to add a couple more likes here. All right, so with the magic of editing, I've already gone ahead, opened an incognito window, and added a few other favorites to our various articles one, two, and three here. So if we jump back into our posts and jump into article one, we already have that JSM plugin, so we can scroll all the way down, see our post meta, and we should see this one right here for simple favorites count, and you'll notice it has one favorite associated with it. If we jump back and go into article two, you'll notice we have two favorites associated with it. And if we jump into article three, you'll notice that we have five favorites associated with it. So using the same logic and the same method that we use to tap into our WooCommerce products, we are going to tap into our favorites. So you might wanna display your top three articles or something along those lines and display their favorites. So we're gonna jump back into our homepage here and we would essentially use our same chart here. So let's go ahead and duplicate this chart because this is our article, let's go ahead and make the data, I don't know, let's go kind of a pinkish color here, something like that. So first things first, 
we want to jump up to the top level here and we are going to change this up just slightly so within our same query string we want our post type instead of product to be post we want it to be published post we want to order by meta value num but the meta key is not total sales anymore the meta key is whatever that simple favorites meta key is so we're going to go ahead and look at what that is here and it is simple favorites underscore count let's go ahead and copy that jump back in and we're going to say instead of total sales this is simple favorites underscore count we want it in descending order so that the highest count article is on the left and our meta query we want only favorites that have a value greater than zero and maybe we want the top for performers per page now we only have three that we added things to so we'll kind of see how this works let's go ahead and shrink down our inspector workspace here and now we need to tell it to consume the proper data so let's go back into general our label set is already populating properly you'll see we have article three two and one so we need to jump into our data set and instead of having it consume the total sales we can just get rid of that open up our dynamic content go into that same custom field meta and on this post we want to scroll down till we find simple favorites count which is right off the screen but there you can see it right here and we'll go ahead and add that in now we can see that article three which has the wrong title of product sales so let's change this to favorites now we can see that article three has five favorites article two has two favorites article one has one favorite so now let's go ahead and save this let's go to our articles here and let's view article 7. within article 7 we'll go ahead and add a favorite to that now let's jump over to our home page and refresh when we scroll down you'll notice that article 7 was automatically added in because we had four posts per page that we wanted to pull through here and now if i go ahead and add a few more likes to article 7 which i'm going to do with an incognito window here using the power of editing You'll notice with a quick refresh now article 7 has jumped up to second place so we have five favorites for article 3 three favorites for article 7 two favorites for article 2 and one favorite for article 1. so obviously we are just scratching the surface of what this is capable of but hopefully this spurs on some really cool ideas where you can tap into data create chart looper providers using custom query strings consume that data and display some really cool visuals as always i hope you guys find these videos useful and happy building